This office is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, man. Evidently, he didn't got into it with somebody. He making all this noise first thing in the morning, man. I wonder what happened. I know what this is about, man. Mad goes to bed at like 10 o'clock at night, and people's making noise when he's trying to sleep. So I guess he feels like, okay, well, everybody else is trying to sleep. Now it's y'all's turn. Yo, I see Big Bull walking towards the bathroom, man, and he don't look too happy, man. He's not walking with a pleasant walk. It's about to be on in this bitch. Yo, once again, it's on. Back at you one more again, Real Kings TV in the house like motherfucking kitchen sinks. You know, oftentimes, man, you know, people send me emails or what have you, uh, Real Kings TV at Yahoo, and they ask me questions, and I try my best to answer every question that's presented to me, and sometimes even in the form of a video. So I was presented with a question earlier this morning when I checked my email, and it said, Real Kings. Have you ever uh, witnessed a, a race war on a yard? I think back and it's like, wow. Because you see these type of things on television all the time. But oftentimes the things that you see on TV are not always the things that are actually uh, uh, accurate, if you will, in real life prison. Some prisons they are, though. Don't get me wrong. But to answer your question... I've never actually seen a race war, but I have seen a race fight up close and personal. Now, before I get into this video, just understand I'm self-proclaimed Mr. 30 Minutes or Better, which means that any and every video that I bring you will be 30 minutes or better for the most part. Um, perhaps you're on your way to work, you're at work, you're on your way from work, you're trying to lay down and take a nap, you're trying to go to sleep. Uh, you want to be entertained, you want to laugh, you want to cry, you just want to hear a good old-fashioned, true penitentiary story, this is the channel for you. Now, with that being said, there is a message. So I'm at the Rotary Farm, and again, I'll always explain for the individuals that's never stepped foot in a prison or a jail, so the people that have and heard me explain these things before, bear with me, simmer down. Everything's going to be A-OK. -okay. So I'm at the Rody Farm. The Rody Farm is where you go after you've been final sentenced by the courts. You may sit in the county jail for 30 days, 60 days. Then they ship you off to the Rotary Farm. The Rotary Farm is, is somewhat of a pit stop. You go there, you get a, a medical evaluation, a physical exam, um, a psychological exam, and... They classify you according to your charges, according to how much time you got. They'll determine which level you are. You got community. You got a, a minimum. You got minimum two. You got medium. And then you got max. And there's something between medium and max. So it's like there's so many different levels. I don't really want to take the time to try to you know, break down every single level, but they determine that at the rotary farm, AKA the fish tank. They call it the fish tank. Um, not really sure why they call it the fish tank, but that's what it is. And so I'm at the rotary farm. Now this is a good, um, 2013. I want to say sometimes my dates are not already always accurate because I've been locked up you know, for you all that don't know, I've served over 10 years in the Department of Kentucky Department of Corrections. Not bragging, it's nothing to boast about whatsoever. But the truth is the truth. And they say the truth shall set you free. I don't necessarily believe the truth shall set you free, but that's what the saying is. And so, I'm at the Rotary Farm, and I never will forget one particular morning, man. It was early. When I say early, it was, they feed you at the Rotary Farm for breakfast at about between 4.30 and 5 o'clock a.m. Y'all rock with me, man. 4.30 and 5 a.m. is breakfast. They turn these bright-ass lights on, man. You 
you in there, you knocked out, man. You sleep or whatever, and these bright-ass lights come on at about 4.30. And it's like, come on, man. And the lights will remain on until at the Rotary Farm, I think they cut the lights off at 10 p.m. So from 4.30 a.m. until 10 o'clock p.m., could be 9, it could be 9. But whatever the case may be, that's a long ass time for the lights to remain on. You're in a dorm, it's 100 people per dorm. You're in there with killers, dealers, grapists. Notice I said grapists because YouTube is on my ass. <laughs> pause. Matter of fact, we're going to bypass the double pause. We're just going to say triple pause. YouTube is on my ass. So I got to watch, you know, some of the, the, the lingo that I use. Um, and it, <laughs> it's just one of those things to where it's just like, man, this is ridiculous. Like you look around, it's like, where am I at? What have I gotten myself into? So let's just say, it's, we, we just going to call it nine o'clock. We're going to call it nine o'clock. Everything shuts down at 9 o'clock. You got to turn your board games in. Lights go off. It's supposed to be quiet time. TVs turn off, I think, at about 11, maybe 11.30. I want to say 11.30. They'll let you watch a little bit of the news. But nevertheless, that's neither here nor there. Dudes sit up. They kick it. They don't necessarily go to bed at the time that the TVs turn off. But they're quiet. They're respectful. See, the Rotary Farm is, is, is prison. You see what I'm saying? So it's different from county jail because at the county jail, they're going to rock all night. They slamming dominoes. Bam! Bam! They slamming cards or whatever. But they don't ride in, in the penitentiary. No, 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 no. Same things you did in the county. You was riding, riding, batting, batting. You was jumping around and, and, and being disrespectful and you don't like it. Check out. Which means get on the door. Which means, hey, I can't be in this cell no more. You don't like it, make bind. Which means... Make bond, pretty much self-explanatory. All that tough guy stuff that you do in the county jail? Nah, it's definitely not. It's not happening in the penitentiary. I'm going to tell you like this. Act that way if you want in the penitentiary, and you're going to get your motherfucking wig split, as Big Hurt would say. But as Real Kins would say, you're going to get this, your noodle, pushed all the way backwards. So thank you, tough. Think that you can go in there with that rah-rah and no guns in prison, bro. Ain't no switches, ain't no, ain't no, ain't no Dracos, ain't no Glocks, ain't none of that in prison, man. You see what I'm saying? They got knives in prison. And they would deal with your little young, uh, uh, disrespectful, aggressive, wanna be aggressive self. And so, as the night rolls through, or as the night rolls along, the next morning, it's probably four. Well, they cut the lights on, as I mentioned, four thirty. I didn't typically go to breakfast. Sometimes I did. Sometimes, I, most of the time, I did. They were serving something like pancakes or, you know, uh, I don't know, sausage and gravy and things like, you know, of that nature. I would go, but out of seven days, I might go to breakfast two days, maybe three tops. It just wasn't worth it. In the Rotary Farm, you know, they feed you decent. It's just too damn early for me. I'm not really a breakfast person. You know what I mean? Not at 4, 30, 5 o'clock in the morning. You know? But nevertheless, that was a dude. He was from Louisville, Kentucky, man. And me and him, we got cool, man. For real. I'm going to call him Mad. I don't want to use his real name because I'm only about 70 miles from Louisville, Kentucky. And I don't really like calling people's real names out. I'll use a real story, <laughs> but just not the real name. Sometimes I will. But most of the time I don't. So we're going to call him Mad. Mad was about 5'9". See, I thought I was going to say 5'11". So, so for the people that watch my videos on a regular basis, they say, real kids, man, why you always say people's 5'11"? I don't know, because people, most people are 5'11". But in this particular situation, Mad was 5, I'm going to say about 5'9". He was a gorilla, man. He just wasn't tall. He was 5'9", probably a good 230. He said in his heyday, his max on the bench was 450, and I believed it. 
because you could see that it was, you know, he had a little belly. It wasn't a big belly, but he had a, you know, he had a little belly. Shoot, I got a little belly. And, you know, it's not major, but that happens. When you're working out, you in top shape, tip-top form or whatever. But once you get out here in the streets and you're dealing with reality and, and, and you know, you, you tend to push the, the weights to the back burner, most people. He had been out for several years. I'm talking about Mad had been out for maybe eight or nine years, had a lot of money, and had no problem letting everybody know how much money he had. He would get on the JPay machine. The JPay machine is how, like, you can communicate with your people on the streets. You send them an email, they send you an email, or vice versa. They can send you pictures. When they send you pictures, you can't print them out, but you can show people, hey, look at me, I was here. Look at me, I was there. I was at this concert. I was on this yacht. I was visiting this place. I was in this country. You can show people your pictures. He had no problem letting people know, man, I had that bag on the streets. I had that money, man. He ended up getting sent back to prison on a parole violation. Not a new charge. It was like some, some bullshit. They'll try to send you back over any and everything on parole. And so... He got sent back to serve the rest of his time out. Well, he didn't even have that much time left to serve out, so he really didn't care. I think he only ended up having like maybe ten or nine or ten months left, eleven months to serve his sentence out. Then he's done. No parole, no parole officer, no none of that. I can do whatever I want to do. Matter of fact, he didn't even have that much time left. I think he only had like six months left. Never, whatever the case may be, he didn't have much time left. But I never really understood because, dude, he clearly had money. He would go to the commissary every day or every week. He had everything that he could possibly want. He stayed on the phone. Now, when I say he stayed on the phone, it costs money to be on the phone in prison, right? It's not like it's just a cell phone. You just pick up the phone. Hey, babe. No, no. Every time you make a call, it's $2. And that's if it's local. Everybody knew him. Everybody respected him. But he just seemed like he just stayed angry. Like I said, he was about 5'9", dark-skinned brother, bald head, completely bald head. He didn't have no facial hair, no beard, no mustache, no nothing. Had a couple, ta you know, he just tatted up or whatever on his arms. And he was just a, he has a couple golds in his mouth. And he was just loud and, and rambunctious. And I don't necessarily want to call him obnoxious, but for lack of better terms... He was a little, uh, I'm not even going to call him out uh, obnoxious because he may see this video and that was my dog. He was outspoken, to say the least. And if he had a problem, he was going to let it be known. Sometimes he would have a problem and people would be like, what did I do? What is the problem? He had done plenty of years of prison. Plenty of years in prison. But like I said, he was towards the end of his sentence and he would always tell me, well, not just me, but people that he fooled with. Man, I get money with the white boys, man. See, I sell at crystal meth. I sell at, 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 at the, the white boy drug. These are not my words. These are Mad's words. And so basically what he was saying is I avoid a certain type of crowd, man. I don't, I don't indulge in what you all are doing over here. I deal with these guys over here. Now, if you have any sort of street sense, just read between the lines. If you don't, keep reading between the lines and you'll understand exactly what I'm saying. Rock with me. And so, you know, as the days goes past, I would just see, like, I would see Mad just, he would be cool one minute. And then sometimes he was just blooping all the way out. This particular morning, it hit the fan. Now, when I say this particular morning, Mad... Okay, at the Rotary Farm, a.k.a. the fish tank, you're waiting to get shipped to your next destination, right? But they do offer jobs. It's a small percentage, a small amount of jobs that they offer, but they do offer jobs to where you don't have to sit in a cell 23 hours a day. You can go out and you'll be a janitor, basically. You'll clean the dorm. But you'll go out and clean the, the uh, officer's station, office, or whatever you want to call it. Sometimes you'll go out on the yard and pick up 
uh, uh, cigarette butts or just pick up trash on the yard, whatever the case may be, and you earn one for every 40 hours that you work, and this is how the prison system works, modern day slavery, for every 40 hours that you work, you'll earn one day per month off your sentence. So essentially, if you work 40 hours a week, all month long, you get four days off of your sentence for that month. Crazy. But with that being said, you also get what's called meritorious good time. So your meritorious good time, I don't even know what the fuck meritorious means. But you get meritorious good time. So basically it means if you own your best behavior and you don't get any write-ups and basically you don't get any write-ups, you don't cause any problems. You get seven days a month off your sentence. So you get your seven days a month of meritorious good time. And then you get your four days a month for work credit. That's 11 days off of your sentence every month. Well, being that Matt didn't have that much time, he knew a couple people at the Rotary Farm because he had been there. And, and sometimes they come through and they'd be like, hey, does anybody want to sign up for a job? Me, I wasn't doing shit. Fuck that shit. I ain't cleaning your toilets. I'm not uh, uh, wiping your walls down. I'm not doing none of that shit. Fuck that shit. Excuse my language, but it's just the mentality that I had in prison. I really still have it. I'm still a work in progress. Don't get it twisted, man. Just because you see me on these videos and I'm 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 still a work in progress. Man. But in Mad's situation, I understand why he did it. Because he was short. Meaning that he was going to go home soon. So any time off of his sentence, I I don't blame him. It's going to be beneficial to you. Plus, he didn't like sitting in the cell all day. So he went on and did it. And he was the dorm janitor, like I mentioned. And one morning, I just remember hearing all of this yelling and screaming. It was a little bit after breakfast. It was probably at about, because they did count at about 7 o'clock. So I want to say this was maybe 6, 6 a.m. Everybody didn't go to breakfast. You got dudes that got real money in there, man. People sending them money. They ain't got to go to breakfast. They eat out of their locker. They wake up whenever they want to wake up, eat cereal, um, um, oatmeal, cream of wheat, whatever they want to eat in the morning. I just heard all this loud noise. Boom, 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 boom. Just a whole bunch of banging. I rolled over. I'm on the top bunk. I roll over. I see, I hear a dude yelling. Yeah, y'all think it's a game? Y'all think it's a game? Fuck that shit. Boom, boom, boom. Just a whole bunch of just banging on the, you know, like the, the yellow mop buckets that you would typically see like at a construction site or any sort of, you know, janitorial services or janitors or what have you respectfully. You know, they mop the floors and then they, they take the mop and wring it out with the uh, yellow mop ringer. That's what he was just slamming and banging up against the wall. And it was so loud and he, he was just, yeah, whoever got a problem, come see me. My office is 24 hours, seven days a week, 365 days. If you don't like this noise, come and get at me. And he was just going off like mad was just going ham. And nobody really knew exactly what had happened. Because it was like, dude, it's six something in the morning. But see, I knew what was going on. You see what I'm saying? I understood. I done been to the joint, man. I understand exactly what this was what this was about. See, Mad was one of them guys to where when they turn the lights off at nine, ten o'clock at night, he wasn't staying up very late. He was gonna stay up for a little minute, whatever, make his little last calls, what have you. By ten thirty, he's in the bed, he's asleep. So when he goes to bed and all this noise and ruckus is going on, even though it's not loud, loud, it's still loud. And guys are being loud by his bed. Guys are being, uh, you know, they're not necessarily being, uh, uh, I guess, respectful for the individuals that are trying to sleep. Mad feel is though, okay, y'all ain't caring nothing about when I'm trying to sleep at night. So guess what? <laughs> What's the problem when y'all trying to sleep and now the situation is reversed? Fair exchange ain't never been a, a, a robbery. So, it's like, okay, he's going through his thing. Now, me, I'm already understanding this penitentiary, man. I'm not going to get up and say nothing to Matt. 
Big Boo. Big Boo was a white dude, man, country dude, real, real cool. Big Boo was probably, I don't know, he literally, I know I joke a lot, but Big Boo was about 5'11". Seriously. Weighing in at probably, him and Mad was about the same size. Matter of fact, he was bigger than Mad. Big Boo was probably about 240. He had these big old legs, man. So I asked him one day, like, how you get the name Big Boo? He talked about how when he was younger, his legs were so big, they just said he was like a bull. He was strong. Real cool, laid back white dude, man. I'm talking about, man, was cool, man. People looked out for him or he had money on the streets. He always spent money at the commissary. Anything you need, if you need some or whatever, he gonna bless you. Big Bull's like, come on, Matt. He gets up, walks to the bathroom. Him and Matt was cool. You see what I'm saying? They had been cool. Come on, Matt, man. What's the problem, man? Now, when I'm trying to sleep, man, ain't nobody saying nothing. You ain't going to ask them why they making noises or whatever. So fuck that shit. He's banging stuff. He continues to bang stuff. Like I said, these dudes are about the same size. Just mad was a couple inches uh, uh, shorter than Bull. He's like, yeah, bro, but we trying to sleep, man. You making all this noise. I don't make noise at night. What about the dudes? You know, you should check the dudes that's making this noise at night. Not us, man. I, I'm very respectful. I'm not... Mad bloops out on Big Bull. I can't believe this shit, Big Bull. You out of all people, we kick it every day, man. You know what I'm saying? And you gonna come back here and, and, and try to question me on this? I've been doing this shit. I've been doing this penitentiary shit. I done served over 11, 12 years in the penitentiary, whatever. And you gonna come back here and check me? This is Bull's first time ever been in a joint. He ended up getting caught up. Uh, I forget what he had. He's some drug charges or whatever. So Bull's like, what are you talking about, brother? I'm just saying, man, you, you just don't have to be that loud. Well, if you got a problem, man, you can handle it right now, Big Boo. Bro, I don't want to handle anything with you. I'm just saying, man, you just being loud, man. Now I'm sick of this shit. I'm sick of this. He banging and banging. Big Bull, I'm more disappointed than you than anybody in here. You supposed to be my nigga. You supposed to be my nigga, Big Bull. Big Bull's just sitting there looking like I'm watching this. I'm on the top bunk so I can see. Big Bull's sitting there looking at him like, what in the world are you talking about? I'm just saying, Big Bull, if it comes to me and you throwing blows, you can get it too. Hold on, brother. I don't want to throw no blows with you. I just want you to be quiet so we can sleep, man. All this is not necessary. Ah, oh, you supposed to be my nigga. You going to do me like this, man? You going to do me like this? Listen, bro, I'm, I'm confused. Whatever I may have done to you, I apologize. I am your nigga, okay? And the big bull just got to, I am your nigga, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, it was like, all right, you know, that situation kind of worked itself out. Big bull, he went on back to his bed or whatever. I tried, man. Dude standing on there banging. Anybody can get it. Once again, we open 24 hours, seven days a week. Anybody can get it. Finally, big uh, tall white dude, man. Uh, We're going to call him Ryan because I really don't even remember his name. He was a young dude, probably, uh, I don't know, he was... In his 20s, you know, mid-20s, say 25, he got up. He was probably about 6'4". He was like, hey, man, I'm sick of this, man. Yeah, I want you. I want you, big boy. So Ryan goes to, to Matt and he tells him, I want you. Matt, he's ready. He take his shirt off. Let's get it. They get to the fighting, man. I'm talking about they fighting hard. I got a first-hand look at it because, again, I'm on the top bunk, and my bunk is kind of closer to the bathroom. It's not, it's not, like, exactly in the middle. Because you got 50 bunks on the left side, 50 bunks on the right side. So instead of me just being in the middle, I'm closer to the bathroom, which is at the very, very back of the dorm. So I see them. They going to war. They fighting. I'm talking about they exchanging blows, man. Actually, I think uh, Ryan was getting the better of Mad. Next thing you know, a couple of Mad's homeboys, they see what's going on. They've been hearing the whole thing anyway. They run back there. They jump in the fight. That's why I said Ryan was probably getting the best of them. They jump in. So they start whooping Ryan, but Ryan, he knew like some, he was good with that MMA stuff too. That's why I be saying, man, dudes be talking about a white boy and never whoop me. Yeah, a pair of lips to say anything. I done seen plenty of black dudes and other, uh, you know, Spanish dudes or whatever get put to bed by white boys. And I done seen white boys get put to bed too. Let's not get it twisted. But I'm just simply saying that whole notion that a white boy had never whooped me. Man, Ryan was throwing them things, man. Plus, like I said, he knew how to use his legs. So they fighting. The other two dudes jump in. So now Ryan's homeboys and a couple of the white dudes see what's going on. Well, they're not going to have that. So they run back here. They jump in. So now it's like three on three. Actually, it was four on three. It was four white dudes, three black dudes. 
couple more black dudes run. They jump in. So now it's like six, seven uh, black dudes. A couple white dudes. A couple more white dudes. They jump in. It's just like TV. They all out like a war, man. They swing and they fighting or whatever. A couple weapons was involved. One white dude had a knife. But one of the black dudes, actually two of the black dudes, they had the lock in the sock. So you got that lock in the sock, man. It's kind of hard to really get up on somebody with, with one of them, them, uh, uh, them blade pushes, you know. So they kind of stand at bay or whatever. Man, next thing I know, man, it was a white dude, man. This dude, they said he had, like, life plus 75 years, man. He was a white dude. He was a bald head dude. He was probably, I don't know, maybe <laughs> he was probably about 5'10", had tattoos everywhere. He runs up, man. I kid you not. He runs up, and he got a lock. And he got it, like, wrapped around his, his knuckles. So he was, like, in a sock, but it was wrapped around his knuckles. And I just see this dude running out of nowhere, man. And as he runs, and he runs into the bathroom, he gets close to the dude that he swings on. And he, you know, he pulls his hand back, and he's like, Nigga! Boom! Just smash his dude. He connects with him, man. Bust his whole eye up. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, he had that combination lock wrapped in a sock, and it was wrapped around his hand. So they battling. I'm sitting there, and I'm watching. So some will say, well, real kids, why don't you run and get in? Jump in. Man, look, I'm trying to get home. I don't know them dudes. I ain't got nothing to do with their situation. Number one thing in penitentiary, you see no evil, you hear no evil, and you mind your business. Dude was making all that noise. He's telling everybody that, the you know, he's open for business 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So, shit, why am I going? Uh, he's going home. He don't even got that much time left. Me, I just, I'm coming off a fresh flop from the parole board. Actually, I'm still waiting to see the parole board, to be honest. They gave me 18 months the first time. So I did the 18 months. I'm waiting to see the parole board. But the whole reason I even got sent to the Rotary Farm is because I got in a fight at the last facility that I was at. So now the parole board is going to review my file and see what well, this guy still ain't learned. He's already gotten into a fight. So you think I'm going to jump into something else? Now, had it been, you know, six, seven white dudes on one, two black dudes, I had no choice but to jump in. But the fight was even. So, hey, I don't have to jump into the fight. So they fighting, man. They they going back and forth. They battling, man. And the police end up seeing what's going on. Of course, they run in. They got their fire extinguishers on their hips. I, I refer to them as fire ex extinguishers. Basically, they're bear spray pepper spray but they're the size of fire extinguishers and they come in they spray everybody oh man everybody's coughing and having trouble breathing man and <coughs> trying to cover up or whatever but the bear spray man is putting everybody to 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 rest seemingly so they get you know everything situated it's blood on the ground it's not too bad it's not like it's a gruesome scene or anything like that man but them dudes went to war back there man and they fought for a good I'm talking about from the first time, uh, the first blow that was thrown, man, it was at least, I know that fight lasted five or six minutes, man, and nobody backed down. I'm talking about dudes was getting knocked out, not literally knocked out. I ain't seen anybody knocked out to where they just land on the ground and, you know, unconscious or anything like that, but dudes, man, they was throwing them things, man. They was fighting, man. I can't really say who got the best of who, but I'm going to tell you what, that white boy Ryan, a young bull that was 24, not bull. Because Bull actually never came back and got in it. Bull was the one, as I mentioned, that was initially talking to Mad. Once he left, he left it alone. He never even came back and jumped in it. But that Ryan, man, that dude, man, whoever fights him on a one-on-one -on -one basis, oh, they're going to have some problems, man. They're going to have some big, big problems because he was in there. He was slanging, man. He was... His arms were so long and his legs was long, but he was wrestling too, and he knew how to do them moves and throw you to the side and get to the next dude saying man <laughs> keep on thinking them white boys are soft but that's not really what the video is about but i'm just simply saying dudes really they get on their high horse sometimes and even in prison now mad wouldn't have done that had he had been to the actual penitentiary now when i say the actual penitentiary i'm talking about to like his final destination you know green river eastern north point uh luther luckett um you know, any one of the uh, KSR, uh, Eddieville, he wouldn't have acted like that, but perhaps he would. Because, see, Mad had a lot of dudes that was kind of like his, his his handlers, his followers. So if he went, they was trained to go with him. So maybe he would have, knowing that he had the numbers. That was a situation, man, that you just look and you reflect and you just like, oh, my God, I'm actually in prison. That was one of many, many times I had to say that to myself. 
but that's the real real reality and the the actually i should have said the harsh reality of prison man it's subject to jump off at any given time the yard can go up man it gets real real racist in there now, i'm not necessarily i don't really want to call it a, a race war really even a race fight yeah it was black on white but it really didn't have anything to do with race it was more so about mad who was being disrespectful not having any respect for anybody else in the dorm that was trying to sleep at six o'clock in the morning but at the same time he felt as though when i'm trying to sleep at 10 o'clock at night and the lights is off and it's supposed to be quiet time i don't say a word I sit back and I let y'all rap. I sit back and let y'all play your games and, and, you know, gossip and do whatever you're doing. Laugh and joke. I never say a word. So now it's my turn to be loud. Now it's the problem. What's the problem? I kind of understand where Mad was coming from. But at the same time, I believe Mad went slightly overboard acting the way that he acted. See, the thing about it in prison, when you loud, rude, obnoxious, you know, you dealing with some real gorillas, lions, tigers, bears. You, these are the things and the sort of individuals that you're surrounded by. Now, Mad had been in the, you know, in the system a few times, so he was fully aware of that. But being that he had, you know, he had his little goons that was gonna come to his aid. Evidently, he wasn't uh, too concerned with that. Now, luckily, you know, it was a couple, you know, uh, scrapes, bruises, you know, busted lips, you know, somebody got their eye cut or what have you, but. It didn't really turn extremely violent. It could have. Like I said, you had a couple of dudes with a lock in the sock. And then, you know, you had the, uh, you had it, it, it thing. It, it, it push her. Just luckily, you know, police was able to come in, break it up. And I'm going to tell you the crazy part about it. Nobody really went to the hole. See, at the Rotary Farm, man, it, the hole stays so full that what they'll do is just for a simple fight or something like that, they'll just separate everybody and put them in different dorms, you know, throughout the yard. And if you do go to the hole, it's supposed to be for 15 days for a fight. You may do two or three days in the hole, then they let you out because it's overcrowded. Nobody received a write-up. Nobody went to the hole. Mad ended up, they brought, they ended up bringing him back to the dorm. And uh, that's just how the situation went. You know, I was there and I ended up getting transferred to another facility. So that was the last that I saw of uh, Matt. And I ended up running into Ryan on down the line, man. And I was like, man, that dude, he crazy right there, y'all. He's crazy, man. <laughs> oh, man, it was a crazy sight, man. Straight out of the, uh, straight out of a TV movie, man. But, um, stay out of prison, man. You know what I mean? Just simply put, just stay out of prison. You don't have to worry about seeing, you know, wars, you know, blacks against the whites, what have you. Because oftentimes, man, guys don't really even have a problem with each other. But you go to where you know. You go to where you're, you know, you, you feel as though you're going to be protected. You see what I'm saying? So sometimes, you know, white dudes might have to go over here with the dudes that don't like the blacks. Now, that's not necessarily how they feel, but you got to roll with somebody. Because if you don't, you'll get rolled over, man. <laughs> That's just how it works in the penitentiary, man. Hopefully you like the video. Feel free to comment. Definitely share. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And be sure to hit that post notification. So anytime I bring you this action and this, this heat, guess what? You're amongst the first to receive.